This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Saren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. I'm not gonna sit on my ass just because the Council doesn't want to do anything. They won't stop Saren, I will. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the Council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Karras. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. You don't want to keep the Council waiting. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. You're the one who destroyed the beacon. Then you tried to cover it up. Shift the blame to cover your own failures. Just like Captain Anderson, he's taught you well. But what can you expect from a human? You can expect me to kill you the next time we meet. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's not his decision! Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. 
You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. We need to deal with Saren ourselves. As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the Financial District. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Balavan's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Sometimes a thousand people must die so a million can live. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Who cares if we get a seat on the Council? What's the big deal? If the Council passes a ruling on an interstellar matter, we have to follow it. We don't have the fleets or political allies to defy them. Once we get a seat on the Council, we'll be able to influence those rulings, protect our own interests, no more jumping through hoops whenever we want something. Take this mess we're in now. If humanity had a seat on the Council, we'd just send the Citadel fleet out to take care of Saren and his Geth. Problem solved. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. 
roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. I thought this embassy was supposed to help humans. Harkin may be human, but he's also an ass. He's had more than his share of chances. If the embassy wasn't protecting him, he would have been fired 15 years ago. CSEC is better off without him. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents, the last line of defense, the final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics. Doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Tell me about Bar Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius. Doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. I can't believe the Council ignored all the evidence against Saren. Saren's one of their best operators. It's only natural they take his word over ours. Oh, so now we just chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with his geth troopers. That's politics, Chief. I hate politics. What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. You were at Torfin, correct? You led the final assault against the enemy base, if memory serves. I don't like strangers keeping tabs on me. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Bar Lavon. 
My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. I heard you work for the Shadow Broker. Do you have any information about Saren? You're very blunt, Shepard. But you're right. I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. And I do know something about Saren. I need that information. Now. Threats don't work on me, Commander. This information is worth a small fortune. But this is an unusual situation. So I am going to let you have it for free. What's the catch? There is no catch. The Shadow Broker is quite upset with Saren right now. They used to do a lot of business until Saren turned on him. Saren betrayed him. Imagine that. No matter what you think of Saren, he's not stupid. He knows the Shadow Broker is a valuable ally. Turning on him doesn't make sense. Not unless something huge was at stake. I don't know the details, but the Shadow Broker hired a freelancer to deal with it. A Krogan mercenary. That's not much to go on. I just told you that the most famous Spectre in the galaxy betrayed the Shadow Broker. Quite a bargain, considering the price. Speak with the Krogan if you want to learn more. I heard he was paying a visit to Citadel Security. If you hurry, you might catch him before he leaves the Academy. Isn't it strange that a Krogan would want to speak with C-Sec? Very. However, I doubt the visit was entirely his choice. You'll need to speak with him if you want to know more. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Still sounds shady to me. Then we can only hope you will never be cursed with a large enough fortune to require my services. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. Most people think I deal in finances. But my real currency is knowledge. I trade information, and it has made me very wealthy. But the Shadow Broker is the true master. Every day he buys and sells secrets that could topple governments, always giving them to the highest bidder. Yet somehow he never seems to upset the natural balance of power. All those secrets being passed around seem to even out. Nobody ends up with an advantage in the end. Any guess what his identity might be? I don't know. Nobody does. The Shadow Broker could be any race, any gender. I have a theory that it's actually an entire group working under one identity. How else could they juggle so many contacts at the same time? How else could they keep all that information from getting crossed? But they've got the perfect setup. Every government is forced to play their game so they don't get behind. But no matter how long you play, no matter how many secrets you buy, you can never win. I thought you'd know more about the man you work for. From time to time, I come across information I sell to the Shadow Broker. That's my only involvement. I like it that way. The more you know, the more dangerous the game becomes. I don't like danger, Commander. I'll leave that to you. What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is, without a doubt, the greatest wonder in the galaxy. 
It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel spaced together in a single strong community. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the Council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard. People like us. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Witnesses saw you making threats in Fist's bar. Stay away from him. I don't take orders from you. This is your only warning, Rex. You should warn Fist. I will kill him. You want me to arrest you? I want you to try. Go on. Get out of here. Yes, human. I'm trying to bring down Saren. Barla Vaughn said to talk to you. Barla Vaughn is a wise man. We may share a common goal, human. Enlighten me. I've been hired to kill the owner of Korra's den, a man named Fist. He did something very foolish. What'd he do? He betrayed the Shadow Broker. A Quarian showed up here on the Citadel. She was on the run. She wanted to trade information for a safe place to hide, so she went to Fist. He promised to arrange a meeting between her and the Shadow Broker. Instead, he contacted Saren. What does Saren have to do with this? Well, the Corian has something that connects Saren to the Geth. He paid Fist a small fortune for her. If we get our hands on that evidence, we can prove that Saren's a traitor. And the Council will have to listen to us. Saren might already have her. Last I heard, Fist still had her. Probably somewhere inside his club. You help me kill Fist, she's all yours. I want to know more about your employer. Can't tell you much. All I got was a coded message with the details of the job. Standard procedure. What about Garrus, that Turian? He wants to take Saren down too. He might come in handy. He was here just before you showed up. Said he was going to follow up a lead on his investigation. Wanted to speak to the doctor at the med clinic. Move out. I didn't tell anyone, I swear! That was smart, Doc. Now if Garrus comes around, you stay smart. Keep your mouth shut or we'll... Who are you?! Let her go. Perfect timing, Shepard. Gave me a clear shot at that bastard. He took him down clean. Sometimes you get lucky. Dr. Michelle, are you hurt? No, I'm okay. Thanks to you. All of you. Why were they threatening you? Who do they work for? They worked for Feast. They wanted to shut me up. Keep me from telling Garrus about the Quarian. The one I told you about, Shepard. She must be able to link Saren to the Geth. 
There is no way the Council can ignore this. Time we paid Fist a visit. This is your show, Shepard. But I want to bring Saren down as much as you do. I'm coming with you. You're a Turian. Why do you want to bring him down? I couldn't find the proof I needed in my investigation, but I knew what was really going on. Saren is a traitor to the Council and a disgrace to my people. Welcome aboard, Garrus. Fist is going to be waiting for us. When we hit him, we better hit him hard. I never properly thanked you for saving me from Fist's thugs, Commander. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been there. Stick to medicine. You're not cut out for dealing with people like Fist. That's good advice. You're a doctor. How did you end up here on the Citadel? My parents brought me here when I was young. My father was a medic with the Alliance. I chose to keep the medical tradition alive, but not the military. Fixing up wounded soldiers isn't my idea of fun. The Citadel. The Council is an executive committee composed of representatives from the Asari Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Though they have no official power over the independent governments of other species, the Council's decisions carry great weight throughout the galaxy. No single council race is strong enough to defy the other two, and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. Each of the council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians gather intelligence and information. The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the accords of the Citadel conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. The second species to join the Citadel the Salarians are warm-blooded amphibians with a hyperactive metabolism. Salarians think fast, talk fast, and move fast. To Salarians, other species seem sluggish and dull-witted. Unfortunately, their metabolic speed leaves them with a relatively short lifespan. Salarians over the age of 40 are a rarity. The Salarians were responsible for advancing the development of the primitive Krogan species to use as soldiers during the Rachni Wars. They were also behind the creation of the Genophage bioweapon the Turians used to quell the Krogan Rebellion several centuries later. Salarians are known for their observational capability and non-linear thinking. This manifests as an aptitude for research and espionage. They are constantly experimenting and inventing, and it is generally accepted that they always know more than they are letting on. Driven from their home system by the Geth nearly three centuries ago, most Quarians now live aboard the Migrant Fleet, a flotilla of 50,000 vessels ranging in size from passenger shuttles to mobile space stations. Home to 17 million Quarians, the flotilla understandably has scarce resources. Because of this, each Quarian must go on a rite of passage known as the pilgrimage when they come of age. They leave the fleet and only return once they have found something of value they can bring back to their people. Other species tend to look down on the Quarians for creating the Geth and for the negative impact their fleet has when it enters a system. This has led to many myths and rumors about the Quarians, including the belief that underneath their clothes and breathing masks, they are actually cybernetic creatures, a combination of organic and synthetic parts.